I can offer you $10,000. If, with your aid, I can ruin the merchants of Chinatown. Hey, dear, it's my organization and perfected teleaudience machine. It should prove quite simple and very pleasant. When can you begin on this? At once. as I said at the same time. All right. We must all strike together. Don't worry. We will. Isn't it marvelous? After all, no one but the Chinese can do this sort of thing well. Thank you.
the ladies you don't care to enter? I meant it already, Willie. Where is Miss Andrews? The Lynn Blumhoff Chinatown. Are you here again? Listen, Martin, there's a tone war in Chinatown. You have to get down there right away. The police need help. Now get your breath and tell me what you're driving at. Some strange hatchet men have just pulled a raid. If I can get the true story about it, it'll mean a scoop, and I'll be taken off the society column. And Marty, think what publicity it would mean for you. So you see how it is, Marty. They need you to help solve the mystery, to tell them... Now, wait a minute, Joan. I'm not a detective. I'm a writer. Oh, but you know all I about... I don't. All I know about Chinatown is what Willie Fu tells me. Huh? When woman come here at door, please fly out of window. Now, I wish you'd run along. I have work to do. Listen, Martin. I won't leave here till I get a story. Do you want me to lose my job? All right, Willie. Tell her something to shut her up. Then you and I can go back to work again. If Chinese merchants suspend business, logical thought indicates much profit accrued to evil rivals. John, there's your story. Somebody wants to break up the Chinese tourist trade. But who? When where of knowledge is dry, Seeker after truth must turn. You're just the man I want to see, Mr. Riley. I'll bet you know all the details of the troubles. I want to know who started the troubles, which of the tongs are fighting, are there any hatchet men, how many people killed? Now listen, Miss Whitey. In the first place, you have no business down here. In the second place, I don't know anything about these troubles. And in the third place, you shouldn't be here as I told you in the first place. Oh, but I have to know. I must get a sensational story and get it quick. Now, give me all the details you know. It's Captain Walters. He'll help me. Uh, wait a minute. Well? I'm Joan Whiting, Captain, representing the Clarion. I want a story of these raids. I must know what it's about, who started it, who was You get it from the desk, Sergeant. How are you, Foley? Hi, Captain. Oh, you're the mayor, aren't you? <laughs> You know, that seems funny to me. I don't see anything funny about it. The meeting's upstairs, Captain. Oh, but wait a minute. You have to tell me something. I'm a reporter. Honest, I am. Yeah? He didn't believe me. Quit your clowning. Mr. Tom Chu speak. Yes, Mr. Chu. I have some very important information. My chauffeur will meet you and bring you to my apartment. Mr. Tom Chu? Yes, I'm Mr. Wilcox's chauffeur. My car's right down the street. Oh. I think we can consider the incident by Mr. Tam Chu closed.
kind of town I want to talk to you about. That cub reporter of mine, Joan Whiting, has disappeared on an assignment in your precinct. I'm afraid she may be in a jam. Not that girl. I know her. She'd talk her way out of any kind of a scrape. Yes, I know. But she should have been back here hours ago. I'm worried about her. All right. Don't worry. I'll put a couple of men on it. Thanks, Captain. I'll appreciate it. Andrews, where is Joan White? That's just what I was going to call you about, Captain. I have every reason to believe that you know more about this than you pretend. Now, let's cut out the stalling and get down to facts. Well, you couldn't be thinking well, I that. certainly am thinking, and I'm thinking hard. Did it ever occur to you that every one of these crimes has been committed exactly as outlined in this book here? in Chinatown, I tell you, and I've got to find her. I don't know why I'm letting you lose, Andrews, but I'm going to take a chance. You have a lot of explaining to do if she isn't found. If she isn't found, it won't be necessary. Come on. Step. And remember what I told you about the next victim. I'm going to check up with my men.
That's a gross exaggeration. You never thought in your life. Don't you think you're causing enough trouble? This thing is beginning to get serious. I do the best I can. Now that's the trouble. I'm afraid you do. elsewhere. After all, there are other Chinatowns. Los Angeles, for instance. I haven't completed my work here. Your work isn't necessary to our purpose. White Clayton Chinatown has been totally suspended. Our stories have increased their sales. I'm afraid you're letting your personal feelings interfere. What do you mean by that? Martin Andrews. That isn't true, Victor. Your mind is so set on revenge that it's become an obsession with you. And why shouldn't it be? You and I have every cause to want revenge. Why shouldn't you feel as I do? Haven't you suffered as I have? Perhaps. But my primary motive was a business one. I wanted to increase our sales. I've done this in San Francisco, and now it is necessary to move on. It is only your personal feelings that keep you from leaving. You understood my personal feelings when you enlisted my aid. I'm sure that they will remain the same in other locations. Leaving San Francisco will give you the opportunity of continuing with your experiment and be of great benefit to my employer. Hmm. You have given me something to think about. Yes. We shall discuss it first. Harrison, I've got lumps in my head, corns on my feet, and contusions on my brain. I've nearly been murdered on five different occasions, and I'm in wrong with the police department who accused me of trying to commit suicide. Now, it's all your fault because you're trying to make a reporter out of a society editor. Now, either you keep this pet in your office where she belongs and out of my life, or I'll have the law on you. Oh, 
a lot. So that's what. I'm warning you. And as for you, you keep out of my life. You know, he seems a little peeved. Oh, you know how Marty is, Pete. Just crowning all the time. Keeping his heart. He's really very fond of me. Yeah, and I'm fond of him. And that's why I'm going to put you in a position where you can't annoy him for a while. Oh, Pete, you're not going to fire me. Not this time. I'm going to save it and give it to you for a Christmas present. No. I'm going to send you to Los Angeles. I just received a tip that there's a woman sailing on the city of Seattle tonight that is mixed up somehow in this Chinatown business. Now, her photograph is in this envelope. It came to me anonymously. Now, you go down to the cashier, draw the money that you need, Get my things packed, shall we? I'm leaving for Los Angeles tonight. You'll stay here and watch the apartment. Yes, ma'am. Nice place you got here. Yes. Uh, here's your ticket. You better keep it in case of a mix-up. Well? How long did the big fella say he was going to be gone? Why? What difference does it make? Well, it might make a lot. I want to talk to you, and I wouldn't want to be doing it when he came in. Then I wouldn't advise talking here. No? Well, I want to talk. I'm getting tired of taking advice. Advice is another name for order. I've had enough of them. Haven't you? What do you mean, Grogan? Oh, you know what I mean, Sonia. Now, if you and I were to get together, we wouldn't have to take any more orders, would we? You. Cooley. So I'm a coolie, am I? All right, sister. Then I'll act like one. <laughs> Turn around, Grogan. Turn around and look at me. Pack the pistol! My life's in danger. I don't feel safe in my cabin. I don't feel safe anywhere on the boat. Nonsense. It'll make you feel any easier. You only have my cabin. 
Thank you. I feel a lot easier. You believe you're going to be shoved off at midnight. Why don't you come clean? Tell us the name of the man who's behind these disturbances in Chinatown. Who is this man you're afraid of? Get up, man, and drink. Drink to yourself. I'm going to tell you everything. The man is back at all of this. He's trying to wipe out the Occidental and the Oriental race. He's trying to start a new race of his own. And that man's name is... Oh! and bring Grogan here. Well, that's impossible, Chief. He's unconscious. We can't carry him with a watch on deck. Here. Put three drops in his tongue. And you will recover sufficiently to walk. Now go. This is the woman I'm following. She's the American representative of the European chain store syndicate, which is trying to ruin the Chinese merchants. Something wrong. This is a photo of Sonia Rokoff. She's an employee of the San Francisco Chinese merchant. I don't care who you think it is. My information comes from the city editor and he knows. It is said, no man may serve two masters. A book does not specify how many masters a woman may serve. Another sick as he'll be tomorrow. That's the third one tonight. Just be careful that he doesn't get noisy. Don't worry. He won't wake anybody. Who is that? That? It's our friend Grogan. But I thought he was dead. No, not yet. You see, I'm thrifty, Sonia. I never discard an article until I'm positive I have no further use for it. 
But why is he wearing your disguise? It is necessary, my dear. If there is any suspicion, it will fall on Grogan. Here. Yeah. Put this on. Later, I will rehearse you in your part. Mr. Andrews, we are faced by a serious problem. Wouldn't our best bet be to catch him as he tries to land? Exactly. And as you are familiar with this case, I'm going to ask you to help me and my men. I think we can spread a watch on deck that will be impossible for him to get through. But they couldn't have got away, could they? Beginning to look that way. Take him in there and put him on the bed. Then come back in here to me. Yeah. I don't like being left alone with him either. Is he still asleep? As if he were. That pill you gave him. Are you sure it didn't? I don't know. Potan gave it to me. Said it was a mild sedative. To use it if Grogan got nervous, excitable. That's all he said. He didn't tell me anymore. Oh, I'm afraid. Yeah, I know. I've always been scared of him, but I, I thought that you. Not anymore. He used to listen to me. He used to take orders from me. It's funny to think of that now. Keep him covered, Long. Joe, see if she has a gun. Sorry, Sonia. You can put your hands down if you want. Mr. Rokoff? There are a lot of questions I would like to ask you. Will you answer them now, or shall I telephone for the police? Yes, I'll answer them. Stand by. I was wrong. I admit that. But what could I do? I never intended the thing to go as far as it has. He forced me. He? Who is he? I was afraid of him. We were all afraid of him. Grogan, Healy, all of us. We couldn't help ourselves, I tell you. And then when we saw what happened to Grogan... What happened to Grogan? means to look in there. The old man. He was 
on the ship. I saw him. The old man, all right. But it's Krogan, too. I could never forget him. promise to help us in return for our protection. But well, we can't protect you unless you tell us the name of the man... Bong. Like the other one. She's putting a type. Couldn't have been he who hypnotized her anyway. He was just a hired thug. Whoever did it must still be around here. Get this man and Miss Rokoff out of here quickly. Whoever it is who set that explosion will expect we were all killed. This lonely houseboy suggests we take these two speechless persons to jail. No. It's evident that they act involuntarily. We must get Miss Rokoff to a hospital so we can get the rest of her confession. Yes. Take care of him. We're going to take you away from here, Miss Rokoff. He's absolutely speechless. Yes, why don't you try it sometime? You will wake now. Your sleep has lasted long enough. You will wake. Sorry, Miss Andrews. This woman is completely under the control of the person who hypnotized her. Unless you can produce that person, she will remain in this condition. No one else can bring her out of this trance. Only a specialist in psychiatry. I suggest uh, Dr. Zander of San Francisco. I don't need your help. You stay here. The detective. Wrong. So oh, they weren't all killed. I follow Mr. Wong. You go back to the apartment. Find out what happened. Wait for me there. Has my brother learned anything? A great deal has been discovered, but not the name of a man who attacks the Chinese merchant. May I help you, sir? 
<laughs> no, thank you. I'm just shopping around. If I should like something, I'll uh, call you. Oh, sir, yes, sir. They have taken Sonia and Grogan to the Shepherd Hospital. Mr. Andrews and Miss Whiting will drive to the city by the inland route. She doesn't seem to respond, Doctor. Her reactions are quite satisfactory. I thought I fill in with important information. All Chinatown on the West Square has been closed indefinitely. It was done at the request of the merchants. The police are puzzled. I can aid the police. I tried to serve two masters. I hired Cotton because, being a Eurasian like myself, he hates both the European and Asiatic races. His hatred for the Chinese is so great that he has become a madman on the subject, a madman bent on extermination. And he will succeed in his plan if his inventions are not destroyed. He has a machine which is an advanced form of television. He can see and hear what is going on in any room where he has placed what he calls a dictavisa. Dictavisa? Never heard of the thing. Nor has anyone else, Captain, except Potan. It is a very small contrivance which may be easily hidden out of sight. There is one in the house of Dr. Wu, and one in the home of every prominent merchant in Chinatown. For all I know, there may be one in this very room. That's a fine fairy tale. You're sure you're not trying to save your own neck? You're right, Captain Walker. I am trying to save my life. I have employed a Frankenstein monster who threatens to destroy me. And you, and you, and you, and the whole nation if he can accomplish it. Go on with your fairy tale. What kind of gadgets are these things? What do they look like? This machine you speak of. Where is it located? Shouldn't you stop us from talking? Quiet. I'm trying. Me. I felt as if I were falling into a dream, asleep. I'm all right now. You can't do anything. No, not now. The psychiatrist has the advantage. Personal contact. And you're willing to lead us to this laboratory? Gladly. And you're not afraid? Of course. I am afraid. But I depend on you to protect me, Captain. Right. So what's that going to do, Governor? When this thermometer Register 250 degrees. The order is gas in the beginning. This is the Northwest Laboratory. Thank 
store for his next flight to come here. Let that burn. If he should come back and figure out, he might grow suspicious. He must remain very quiet till he returns. What did you mean when you said you should have known? He told me of that liquid. It gives off a deadly gas at a temperature of 250 degrees. Oh, then you knocked that Bunsen burner out just in time. So, are you all right? Don't. Come out of it. You have to. Don't you understand? If anything happened to you, I, I couldn't go on. Marty, you mean that? Honest? Say, were you playing possum? It's not your turn to ask questions till you answer mine. Did you mean what you said? Forget it. I must have had a whiff of that gas myself. All clear, sir. I want 35 Ferguson Alley closed so that a rat couldn't get in or out of it. Yes, and arrest anyone who tries without a pass from me. At once, Mr. Wong will accompany you. Oh, but, but... There are no bots. We're going to investigate this place. Oh, but you need me, Captain. I've been all through this place several times. I want to help. And you're going to help. You heard Mr. Okoff's description of this man, Potan. I want that description to appear in this afternoon's edition of your paper. We'll fix it so that man can't find a hiding place in the city without danger of being identified. Honest, Captain, you're smarter than I thought you were. Here, I'll give you a pass so you and Wong can get out of Chinatown. Here. No. Wong, you take it. She'll lose it. Think over what you said to me, Marty. If you want to go back on your word, of course, there's nothing I can do about it. If you don't clear out of here, I'll make a speech before witnesses that you beg me to take back. Ladies Hello. and... Miss Rokoff, will you show us this rabbit warren? Certainly. This way, Captain. Stop. Geely, draw those curtains. Sit down, Grogan. There. What do you think this is a wise move? The police seem sure to come here. You're not going to advise me. Oh, no. No, you got me wrong. I only thought... You saw. So did Grogan. I took steps to see that he stops thinking. Look at him. And if you make it necessary, I can arrange to put you in the same state of blissful helplessness. Oh, no. Not that. I'm here to take on it. I want to get you out of this jam. Then watch the three from the window yes. and take care. You shouldn't be seen. Yes, sure. Say an ancient fable of man seeking lost horse. Well? Man imagined himself horse. Then go where horse would go. Well, imagining myself to be for town, I would think I was least likely to be looked for at Sonia Rokov's uptown apartment. Detective Instinct, you like beautiful chrysanthemum in your honor of a head. Captain Walters, I have a hunch I'd like to play if you'll pass Willie and I out of Chinatown. All right. And when you get out, stay out. 
I'll have my men search this place thoroughly. Mr. Rokoff, I wonder if you'd let me have the key to your apartment. Of course. But why? You don't think now, that... I might be able to pick up the clues. I'll let you know if anything further develops. Thanks. I don't think you two will be of any further use here. Dr. Wu, will you please stay at your quarters where we can reach you? I'll drop you at the clarion office. Give Miss Whiting any further details that you think will aid us in the search. Well, does that cover it? Excellently. Miss Whiting has written a very vivid description of Victor Potan. There, Mr. Harrison. Do I get a raise? Don't bother me now. I'm busy. Copy, boy. Copy. He's never here when I want him. Hey. Thanks for the boost, Miss Rokoff. It means a lot. Are you still frightened? Not for myself. But I am worried about Mr. Andrews. What about him? He's gone to my apartment. He thought he might find a clue. He thought he might find Potan there. Did he go alone? No, he took Willie through. It is unlikely that Potan would go there. Of course it is. That's just why Potan would go there. Because it is unlikely. Martin gets that. Hurry, my car is outside. Look, there's a fight. Fools will kill themselves. Oh, Why don't they get back away from that hedge? It's Martin! And Grogan, he'll kill him.
Before the crowd comes. Well, Dr. Wu, I think Chinatown is safe from his invasion. Thank you, Captain. We are safe in the hands of your faith and force. And you, Mr. Andrews, we have much to thank you for. Well, without Captain Walters, I'd have been out of luck. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, Doctor. Good day, Doctor. to send a couple of men to your place while the girls are there. Why do that? I'll take the girls to Jones' apartment before tonight. You will not. Don't let those girls out of your sight till we capture this lunatic. Or do you rather have them spend the night at the police station? Why, of course not. I'll take care of them. May we 
Yes, Lady Jo. I never say, as long as he's alive. Nonsense. Try to rest. I'll try. I thought you were never going to bring that tea. Save my life. Pull up on the police, quickly. Now you call. 
It's not bad. I don't know where he's going. He was crazy. Raven man. Come on, sell it. Oh, I know everything at a full title, but not 13. He hopes to get to China after he polished you off. Take care of him, Willie. Yes, I'll have a lot. Police headquarters, quick. California license number. WS17171. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. Stolen black coupe. California license number WS17171. Man named Potan. Tall, dark, Eurasian features. Cars number 2729. Watch the waterfront. Take no chances. Hey, wait a minute. That was Potan, the Eurasian. What, not the Chinatown killer? Yeah. Well, I guess he saved the state at the expense of the trial. At last. At last, we can stop chasing around Chinatown and get back to work. Now, let's see, who are we? Something about Lu, I believe. Ancient Chinese queen, honorable master, has passion for slicing off heads of male subjects. Killing all the males? Seems sort of silly. What was the idea? Poor Chinese queen have no other way of getting what she wanted. So different from modern American girl. So, oh, the modern American girl gets what she wants, does she? You're wrong, Willie. And I'm gonna... Oh, Marty, you're a wow. You're the greatest detective in the world. Sherlock Holmes is a back number. Look, you're all over front page. And little Joan puts you there. Now what I want is an exclusive personal interview with you, and I... Sit down. You're not going to get an interview from me or anyone else. You're through with the clarion. I just called Harrison and had you fired. Oh, Marty, you couldn't have... You couldn't have done that. Oh, couldn't I? Do you think I'm going to have my wife working on a newspaper? Or anywhere else, for that matter? Oh, Marty... Your wife? Yes. Well, why not? But, but, Marty... Shut up. I don't want to have any trouble with you. Ancient Queen Lou and modern American girl have much in common. They always get what they want. Slight difference in method only. <laughs>